Hi friends, how are you today? Hope everyone is having a great day. My name is Lizbeth and I am not a makeup artist, but I like to do my makeup and tell stories about things that I find interesting. So today I'm just, I don't know, I feel like I'm all over the place and I just, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. It could be an epic disaster, but we'll see. I feel like I can't, you know those days you just feel like you can't find anything and you're just feeling a little, I'm also feeling a little rushed because I got to, I had to drop my husband off at his truck this morning. I haven't had to do that in a while. Um, but I had to drop him off at his truck this morning because it was somewhere else and all that good stuff. And so I'm just, I don't know, I guess I'm feeling a little thrown off or just of everything. I got home, I had to leave at like 3.30 in the morning. Got home a little after four and then took a nap for a little while. So I don't know, I just got up later than I usually do. And I just, you know those days when you just, yeah, and it's just, yeah. I know that made a lot of sense. And please ignore the mess on my head. I just, I don't even know what's going on with that. It just, it is what it is. It is what it is today. You know, I'm also really thirsty. Hold on just a sec. Okay. Sorry. I'm good. All right. Mirror. All right. So I've talked. So you know how I mentioned I job I had to drop my husband off at work his truck today. Well, before I dropped him off, I was looking around on this website I use sometimes to find stories. And a lot of, and I found the headlines that were like the uh, disappearing hitchhiker or like most haunted stories and stuff. I'm like, why do I do this to myself? I don't even know. But I definitely did not click on any of those links because I'm like, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to be driving home freaking out, by myself, freaking out because I'm going to be expecting to see weird hitchhikers everything or it's like the vanishing hitchhikers i don't need phantom hitchhikers or something like that i don't even know but i'm like why why do i do this to myself but i didn't read any of the stories and so i don't actually know what they said and so i didn't freak out on the way home so i feel like that's a plus i'm kind of just i'm just trying to do kind of a quick look today and we've seen how that's gone in the past but today We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so speaking of haunted things, I was looking, I was kind of wondering, you know, where do haunted houses come from? Well, I know where haunted, haunted, where haunted houses come from, but where do the haunted houses come from that people go to be scared? I've been really liking this combination lately. I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel like it works. Um, But where do where did like the uh haunted houses that people go to to be scared for fun which again i don't go to because i don't think because being scared isn't really fun for me you know if you do that's great i'm not knocking on it i'm just saying that's not my idea of fun yeah, but so i was kind of wondering where it comes from and like in Europe it dates back to like the 1800s Marie Tussaud, Tussaud something like that had a collection had a wax collection of decapitated figurines from the French Revolution I believe Hold on, let me check that real quick. I believe it was the French Revolution, though. Um, yes. She had um, a collection of 
decapitated wax figurines. And apparently she had done the death, like she had done the death masks for some of the people. At least that's what I read. Don't, don't quote me on that. But, um, anyway, so that was like in Europe and what am I doing? Um, anyway, so, hold on. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can compose myself for a sec. Okay, there we go. So, so they started back as early as 1800s in Europe. And, but, hold on. Fun fact, did you know that the vast majority of people die in their homes because I didn't know this but I just found this out but apparently they do so maybe there's more haunted houses out there than we know like real haunted houses I but I feel like not all haunted houses have to be scary I've got family members who have had who have experienced like haunted houses in both scary and not so scary I feel like, like it just depends on the people who died in the house and what kind of people they were, what kind of lives they lived, or how they died, for that matter. But anyway, again, I have no real um, desire to ever encounter any ghosts or anything. I'm I'm good. I'm good as I am. Um, because I I believe in them. They're real, but I just have zero desire to see them. And I know I've talked about haunted houses on here before. I don't know if I said that. I might have said this, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I was wondering where they came from, like here in America. How did they start in America? And apparently like the haunted houses for fun had a big start like in the Great Depression. Which I found interesting because I guess like when when Irish immigrants would come over, they kind of brought a tradition of pranking, but they were fairly harmless pranks. However, in the 20s and 30s, teenage boys were taking it to a whole new level. They were breaking street lamps. They were starting fires. I believe um, there were some pranks that got people killed. Hold on. In 1939 at Tacona, at Tacoma Park, uh, MD. I'm sorry, I always forget that. I think that's, is that Minnesota? I'm pretty sure that's Minnesota. If it's not, sorry, I, f I get confused with the, with some of the abbreviations for states. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. For states, sometimes. But she, a girl there almost lost, in 1939, almost lost an arm because of a, because of a, a prank throwing rocks. So it was getting pretty serious. It also. Um, that's the portal we were going to go back. It's holographic. I love it. But, um, anyway. So, it was getting pretty serious, and so, hold on just a second. So parents and stuff started being like, we need to do something about this. Because it was teenage boys who, they were probably bored, and it was a time of, you know, it was a Great Depression, it was a time of great social and economic 
um, lack, I guess. I'm not sure if that's what I'm looking for, but I feel like it works. Well, depression and social and economic depression. So parents and communities kind of got together and were like, well, what can we do in order to stop this, to get, to stop these pranks because they're harming people. And so they decided that they were going to start making these haunted houses. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. And I mean, they weren't like the haunted houses we see now, but of course, because it was the 1920s and 30s but they were oh, they hold on back to the pranks that some boys were causing also in Fairfax County Virginia in 1929 some boys put This is just, I don't know guys, I feel like this is not going to be my favorite look. Oh well, it's just makeup. Buff it out a little bit. Buff, buff, buff. That looks a little better. But some boys put some rocks and in the middle of the road and put some leaves down. Or put like some leaves and or no, they put some boards and a large stone in the middle of the road and then covered it with leaves, causing an accident. And a similar prank killed three people in Waukegan, Wauk 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 I think, Illinois. And so these pranks were costing cities millions of dollars, even back then. So communities and parents and just people came together and were like, what can we do to stop this? Because it was costing them money that, guess what, they, they probably didn't have. And it was hurting people badly. And it wasn't, and it, sometimes it was pe boys in the community, sometimes it was roving boys, you know. But it needed to stop. Because it just was causing so much damage and so much pain to people. So they decided that on All, All Hallows Eve, which was Halloween back then, they would start doing, making haunted houses and like the entire communities came together for these. And just made these, these area, these fun places where people could go to see, to get scared and well, but or for, it was like a safe prank where they could go and safely be scared I guess I don't guess that's, that's what they did so but yeah because of this panic they pulled the idea of what today is a haunted house 
But these haunted houses, yeah, they they were different. I'm pretty sure I already said that like three times. But just in case you didn't know, they were different. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm doing today. I'm just, I need to chill out. Apparently, because I'm just all over the place. I know it's ridiculous but it's just it's I guess it's one of those days like I don't feel super stressed I just feel blurg well I don't know it's not even blurg it's just I don't, I don't even know how to describe it I just I feel weird I guess but so The, um, since the people did not have a lot of money, one of the first things they did was called house to house parties. And at these parties, they would, oh, I know I probably make the most attractive faces on here, right? Just kidding. They're really not. Uh, didn't mean to do that. But hold on, let me tap this in real quick. Tap tap tap. Tap tap tap. It's been a while since I've done this. It, well, I kind of did it yesterday. I don't feel like it made a huge difference though, but that's okay. And that basically led to a modern day trick or treating because I would have these house to house parties, which really led into what we call modern day trick or treating now. But, but Halloween apparently. A lot of people think it goes back like thousands of years, but in reality, it's less than a hundred years old. Well, I guess this year, if it would start like in the 1920s, 1930s, it would be about a hundred years old. But it's not this grand tradition that goes back thousands of years. It's a fairly modern tradition. So, you know, the Halloween that we know, well, of course not the day of Halloween, but the Halloween that we know now with haunted houses and trick-or-treating and all that good stuff. But, so. So they would have this so they would decorate their houses and it would often be like in the basements of the houses where they would bring the kids down and it would be really dark. It would be just like a simple haunt kind of thing. It would be really dark and they'd bring the kids down and they would have the kids like and I feel like even today, people, and I feel like people today even still do some of these things, but they would have the kids put their hands in bowls of peeled grapes or cold spaghetti or stuff like that. Or tell them that the peeled grapes were eyebrow, not, not eyebrows, eyeballs. Tell them that the peeled grapes were eyeballs, all that good stuff. So nothing too intense, but just something that would keep the kids out of trouble and give them a little bit of a thrill. In 1937, a party pamphlet, uh, Martin 
a, a party pa pamphlet that Morton, hold on, Morton was, is, let me introduce to you who Morton is. Lisa Morton is an author of a book called Trick or Treat, A History of Halloween. But she would, in a, in a 1937 pamphlet that she put in, in her book, it said that for, um, there was a pamphlet that was given out that had ideas for to create these haunted houses for to create a terrifying situation. Well, not terrifying, but you know what I mean. Maybe a little terrifying. But a little terrifying. Or just to create a haunted house for these kids. And in this pamphlet, they... They had guidelines for what to do for how to make these haunted houses and they some of their tips were to hang old for, fur, strips of raw liver on the walls where one feels his way to the to like a dark room where there's moans and howls and uh come from dark corners damp sponges and hair nets hang from the ceiling I feel like my um, contour is going to be a little more on point today. Yeah, I like that better than I did yesterday. But, so, um, then the damp sponges and the hair nets would be like to assimilate cobwebs, I believe. Just have weird, eerie things touching their faces. I really hate having adult acne. It's not fun. But anyway, back to the story. So, they had these things. They created these haunted houses and... They would have at one place they had someone dressed as a dog as like a guard dog to jump out and bark at them and growl. And then a civic group called the Junior Chamber, also known as the JCs, got in on the action and they sponsored Trails of Terror, which is like the the haunted corn mazes and stuff today. But it was because it was the versions of house, house parties in open fields, which, yeah, is basically like the haunted corn mazes and stuff today. Oh, man, that's dark. Oh, man. Apparently, I wanted to go with super dark under eyes. Oh well. I'll make it work. Probably should have put a lighter shade under there, huh? Well, duh. That would have been smart. Let's try popping a little color, a little bit of shimmer over here. See if it works a little bit. But yes. Yeah. I've seen worse. I've seen better, but I've seen worse too. I've probably done worse. Oh, and this was the palette I used, the Morphe palette. I really liked, I love this palette. I just, 
It's super nice. Sorry about that. And but what was I going to do? Brows. Yes. So they had these outdoor trails of terror. And the plan worked spectacularly within a few generations. The dangerous, the dangerous pranks had uh, were nearly eradicated, leading to the haunted houses and trick or treating that we know today. And. In 1969, Disneyland opened its newest attraction, which was the Haunted Mansion. Have you guys ever been on a ride, on that ride? It freaked me out the first time I went, and I'll be honest, still don't love it. It's been, it's been a minute since I've been to Disneyland, but I just, it, it's not one of my favorite rides. Splash Mountain was always my favorite, but I heard that they're closing that and remodeling it, which makes me kind of sad. Because I just, I love the original Splash Mountain. I don't feel like it needed any updating, but apparently the people who had, are in charge did. Anyways, so. Uh, the JCs, remember them? They're the Junior Chamber uh, junior chamber who started the whole outdoors fields and stuff. What else do we need? They upped their game in the 1970s and no one did it better than the Christian Life Group. The Christian Group Campus Life. And they, they had mazes, costume actors, and gore. So this, I feel like this is really leading into the haunted mazes and houses that we have today. Well, yes, because this was the 1970s. Um. Oh, I like that. I think I've used this color before, but I like it. Unless, of course, I get it in my eye. Then I don't like it so much. I think we're good. Maybe. Hold on. Sorry. So they, yeah, the JCs had really up to their game in the 1970s, creating mazes with trying to dab without ruining it. Um, but yeah, they had costumes, lots of gore. Um, outdoor mazes in charity houses all around the country. Alisa Morton, the author, says that she went through one when she was like 12 and it was kind of traumatic. She was like, you sat down on a bench to watch a operation and the bench was bench was electrically wired and it gave you a little zap
Um, and haunted attractions these days are also different from back then because they have all kinds of safety regulations they have to follow. Which back in the 20s and 30s and probably even in the 70s weren't as strict. But now they have all these regulations and rules and stuff that they have to follow in order to keep their actors and their guests safe and happy. Which is why, remember when I was telling you about the one haunted house when I visited with my friend and like the actor was trying to get in between us and was like touching us? And I'm like, I don't think that that's usually allowed. I mean, I guess it depends on the haunted house too because I believe there are more intense haunted houses where they where they can touch you, but I don't feel like the one we went to was super intense because if it was super intense, I wouldn't have gone. <laughs> Even then, I still did not love this haunted house. But um Anyway, so that's that's pretty much the history of how haunted houses start in, started in America. It was all because groups uh, groups of teenage boys were causing major damage and having these pranks, which were just well. I'm, Remember yesterday, I was like, I'm going to start looking in the mirror a little more. Apparently, I forgot about that today. But, oh well. I'm a work in progress. It's true. Um, all right. I think I'm done except for my lips. I will be right back. I'm going to go to my lips and then I will be back to wrap up. So when I do my lips, I feel like I always mix just because I have a lot of lip products and I just, I feel like I like to create my own lips. I wanted to go for kind of more, my own look, I guess, my own color. I wanted to go for more of a neutral look with this. Um, It's these. I know. It's a lot. But it's what I do. And there's. And then. I'm, I was a little hesitant about this. Because. Again. I love my honesty. As you have Beverly Hills. Lip powder. My favorite lip powder. Again. Not so sure about the. Maybe I'm just buying the wrong colors. But I bought them at TJ Maxx. I think. And they were the colors they had. But. I'm not, I'm not displeased. They also do not have the best staying power. I can already, already see them it coming away from my lips a little bit. But anyways, so that is how modern ha haunted houses started. And that's, that's, um, that's pretty much it. If you go to a haunted house this year, please be safe. Please be careful. I, so my husband is never going to let me hear, live this down if he hears about this. But I'm considering going to that haunted cornfield thing that's by our, our place if he wants to this year. But if we do go, he better prepare, he better be prepared for me to be hanging on to him the whole time and not letting go. You better not touch me. Um, because, I don't know, maybe it's time to give it another try. You never know. Maybe I'm just glutton for punishment. I don't even know. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope you enjoyed this look. I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. I like it. Um... 
looks a little darker, but it's also, I feel like it's also a little folly and it's fall, so it works. But I hope you enjoyed. Sorry I was so scattered today. I just, it's just one of those scattered days. And, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And please, re please remember to always be patient and kind with people. Everyone has a story. We don't know what it is. So please be patient and kind. It makes the world a much better place. And be careful out there. And I will see you next time. Bye. So you know what I forgot to do my scatterbrainedness? I forgot to do blush. So I'm going to pop some on real quick. There we go. And there we go. I know, I probably didn't need to do that on camera, but I did. Anyway, please remember to like and subscribe and treat those everyone with um, patience and kindness. And I will, again, I will see you next time. Bye.